Peak Sprinklers. Today we're talking about a uh, Toro branded impact sprinkler, uh, one inch inlet, uh, part circle adjustable impact. Uh, and um, you know, it's branded Toro, it has a Toro style model number on it, this is the 434. And um, it is definitely not made by Toro. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change the perspective, the viewing perspective for this video and uh, show you this thing a little closer up. So I'll be right back. Okay, so as I was mentioning, this is a Toro branded uh, model number 434, uh, one inch part circle adjustable impact sprinkler. And uh, you know, it has an aluminum body. It's got this um, brass bracket off the side of it that holds the diffuser pin and uh, then bronze lever, uh, bronze trip mechanism, stainless steel trip pin, stainless steel um, collars, uh, and then a, a brass bearing. And, um, you know, these were actually made by Western Brass, and um, they were uh, manufactured for a number of brands. And so I, I wanna say that the, the Western Brass impacts were incredibly successful. When you think about all the companies that rather than developing their own impacts, just went ahead and let uh, let that foundry private label them for them. And I think I think the the part circles from Western Brass were, uh, were 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 the prettiest sprinklers they made, the really most amazing ones. And and the one size down from this, the three quarter inch, is probably my favorite of all adjustable part circle impacts. Um, Western Brass called that their 260. Um, you know, in Toro numbers, it would have been the 433, uh, and then uh, and then other brands use different numbers. So this 434 is the one inch; it's one size up. And uh, you know, looking through some of my old catalogs, I've got it from you know Rainomat, Weathermatic, Nelson, um, uh, Imperial, Champion. I'm sure I'm going to forget a few, uh, but I'll show them up on the screen just so you get a sense of kind of the range of of companies that. Uh, actually just took these and, and had them stamp their, their logo onto the back end of them. And, and they work great, you know. This sprinkler here is probably from the, the 1970s, maybe the early 1980s, and, uh, and, and it still runs very well. Uh, it is farm fresh. It's still even, I noticed even though I've run it, it still has some like cobwebs in the spring somehow. And there was a little plug of dirt and stuff that came out of the nozzle when I first turned it on. And I haven't cleaned it at all. I kind of like it this way, a little bit scuffed up from its use uh, over the years. What I will say is I am taxing my water supply here in running just this one sprinkler. So it has a, uh, a 5 16 nozzle, and then the inner nozzle is actually uh, a plug. And um, Toro didn't list that in the catalogs I had for them. Uh, the years that I have uh, as an option. It just showed this as like a one eighth nozzle all the time. And so uh, I used the, the Nelson catalog to understand what the performance would be with a 5 16 range or drive nozzle and, and a plug in it. And, and you quickly see uh, why I, it struggles to run in my environment here. Um, you know, uh, the uh, shaded areas in the performance chart are where they don't recommend <laughs> using it. And uh, I noted that uh, I, I had dynamic pressure of about 28 PSI when I was running this. And uh, with the 5 16 nozzle, we're trying to put 13, 14 gallons a minute through it. And that is just at just beyond the edge of what I can run well. And uh, so uh, as a result, to have it not look like just a kid standing there with a garden hose without his thumb over the, the uh, opening of it, um, I had to turn the diffuser pin in quite a ways on that guy and you'll see it. But you know what? The miracle is the sprinkler runs, it trips, it returns, it trips again and goes the other direction. And uh, and the pattern doesn't look super terrible. It's got some pretty good sized water droplets, but uh, with with the uh, diffuser pin way in, obviously we're pulling the radius uh, back quite a bit too. And so the chart says I ought to be getting about 50 feet of radius from this um, up to maybe even like uh, 52 or so, I think. So, but uh, I don't believe I'm getting anywhere near that kind of range as I'm running it. But it does work, technically. And uh, I would imagine if I were to measure the precip rate, it would be super high because we're dumping a lot of water over a relatively short piece of ground. Um, so that's really what I have to say about it. I think, you know, Western Brass doesn't necessarily get its due for uh, filling out the product lines of so many companies and then being used 
in so many applications, even, you know, meeting the Caltrans uh, spec and selling thousands of sprinklers that way, you know, after they'd been really hardcore Rainbird customers for so many years. And just the fact that so many, they, they made such a decent product that so many companies, you know, really put their faith uh, in, in a third party like that. I, I think that speaks volume for the kind of business that they were. And, uh, you know, obviously Toro is a big plastic company. And uh, so they weren't going to be investing in making uh, sprinklers of just about any kind of metal. And it made sense for them to turn to a third party for these kind of impacts and for their quick couplers and for their brass valves and stuff like that. And, and so they did and, and continue to uh, where any of their brass products are concerned. So that's about all I have to say about this one. I'm thrilled that it runs. I will say that there are probably people who could uh, have this thing look a lot better when it's running, giving you know pumps and water supply and that kind of thing. But, uh, but it, it, it worked well enough that I didn't want to just pitch it out. I wanted to share it with you guys and, and see what you thought as well. And um, as always, I sincerely appreciate your continued uh, uh, support of the channel and watching the things that we put out. And if you have a moment, please uh, go ahead and hit the thumbs up so that YouTube will show it to uh, other people who are interested in this kind of content. Thanks.